We use computers and smartphones daily, but most of us scratch our heads when it comes to buying one. Have you ever looked at a computer advertisement and see numbers with technical jargons thrown at you? What does a 3.2 GHz mean? And does a bigger number always indicate that the processor is better? Suppose we want to compare two computers on how fast they can execute the program. As different programs take significantly different durations to finish, we split the program into equally sized chunks that takes the processor the same amount of time to go through each of them, called the cycle time. Instead of comparing how fast the processor can go through a program, which is dependent on factors like disk and memory accessors or waiting on inputs, we base the speed of a processor on its cycle time. A processor with a smaller cycle time will have a much higher clock rate and is deemed the faster processor. 3.2 GHz means that the computer can perform 3 trillion and 200 billion cycles in a second. But what happens in one cycle? Generally, the processor computes an instruction within a cycle, for instance, the addition of two numbers and the storing of the result in a location. In one instruction execution cycle, the processor goes through the five-step process of fetch, decode, execute, memory, and write back, like purple place. In the fetch stage, the instruction is fetched from the memory. In the decode stage, the computer gathers the numbers from its registers and fit them into the third stage where the actual addition of two numbers happen. The memory stage is responsible for the loading and storage of long-term values, so our instruction skips this step and moves on to write back, writing the result to the location that was specified by the instruction from the beginning. There are other factors that contribute to how fast the processor is, like the number of cores, type of instruction set architecture, and the size of CPU cache. One of them, the branch predictor, makes use of a revolutionary idea known as pipelining. Yeah, it's time to get out of here. You may notice that while the instruction is in the execution stage, the rest of the processor does not do anything. This means that we can load the processor with multiple instructions at different stages. Imagine you are travelling up an escalator. Do you wait for the person in front of you to travel to the end, or do you join the escalator right after the person? Just like an escalator can serve multiple people at once, a processor can compute multiple instructions simultaneously. Although pipelining results in a small difference in latency, it increases the throughput of the workload. A lift is faster at getting between floors in most cases, but the reason malls and buildings install escalators is because they must transport many people at once. Similarly, the processor suffers a slight degradation in latency when implementing pipelining. For example, store for dependencies, when the following instruction makes use of the result of the current instruction, causing an increase in the complexity of the system as well as having to implement bypass features. The huge increase in throughput is well worth the trade-off due to how many instructions the computer must process. I hope that you appreciate the intricacies behind processors and know what a 3.2 GHz means the next time you see it. Thanks for watching.